Hello friends, in this video we will discuss what is lap length, why it is provided and what will happen if we don't provide it, how to calculate lap length and what are the general rules to be followed for lap length. So first of all, let us understand what is lap length and why it is provided. Lap length also known as lap splices. Suppose we need to construct a building of 20 meter height but there is no 20 meter single bar available in the market. The maximum length of steel bar available in the market is usually 12 meter. Why 12 meter? It's because of transportation problem and manufacturing difficulties. So we need to join two bars of 12 meter to get 20 meter bar. So lap length is the length provided to overlap two rebars in order to safely transfer load from one bar to another bar. An alternative to this is to provide mechanical couplers. What will happen if we don't provide lap length? If we don't provide lap length, then the load transfer mechanism will fail, which eventually lead to failure of structure. Also, if we provide less lap length than the required, then the reinforcement bars will split and cracks can be developed in the concrete. Now let us understand how to calculate lap length. Lap length calculation for tension zone and compression zone are different. Let us take the case of beam. When beam is subjected to forces in a building, the bottom portion of beam experiences tension and top portion of beam experiences compression. So first we will discuss about tension zone. In tension zone there are two cases. One flexural tension and two is direct tension. For flexural tension, the lap length shall be LD that is development length or 30D whichever is greater is considered where D is the diameter of the bar. The concept of development length I will explain in next video. Generally it is 41D where D is the diameter of bar. For direct tension the lap length should be 2LD or 30D whichever is greater is considered. In this case the straight length of lapping of bars shall not be less than 15D or 20 cm. Lap length in compression. In case of compression, the lap length is equal to the development length calculated in compression but not less than 24D. What are the general rules for lap length? For different diameter bars. When the bars of different diameters are to be spliced, the lap length is calculated considering the smaller diameter bar. Suppose you are constructing a column from bottom 20 mm diameter bar is coming and from here 16 mm diameter bar has to be spliced. Then for calculating lap length 16 mm diameter should be considered and not 20 mm. If the diameter of bar is more than 36 mm then lapping should not be done. Instead of lapping these bars should be welded. But if welding is not possible then lapping can be permitted for bars larger than 36 mm. But in this case, additional spirals shall be provided around the lapped bars. Lapping should be done in a staggered manner. These laps should not be given at the same level to avoid buckling. The stirrups shall be closely spaced in the lapping portion. It's because when we provide lapping in a concrete member, the strength of member slightly reduces. Hence, we need to provide more number of stirrups in this portion. In case of bundled bars, lapped splices of bundled bars shall be made by splicing one bar at a time. Such individual splices within a bundle shall be staggered. In this image, you can see some amount of rebar is left for future construction. This extra rebar will be needed for tying bars of column. This extra length of rebar is also called as lap length. Lapping zone. This is the column. L is the length of column. In case of column, the tension zone is located at L by 4 distance from both ends of column. This zone experiences tension so here we should not provide lapping. The bending moment at middle portion of column is zero. It means the middle portion of column is least stressed. Hence lapping should be provided in the mid section of column so that transfer of stresses from bar to bar happens smoothly in this region. Whereas in case of beam, as I have already explained before, the top portion of beam experiences compression and bottom portion experiences tension. So the top reinforcement in beam is lapped at mid span 
as the beam does not experience any negative moment at mid span and so lapping is great in this region in case of bottom reinforcement the lapping is provided near the ends of the beam or l by 4 distance from column face but should not be in the mid span of the beam and one last point the lapping should not be provided at joints so friends thanks for watching see you in the next video